Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oscar Buzz, and we are getting into Best Picture Predictions. Trevor here, joined by Thomas, as always, and we are back after fall festivals, so let's jump into it. So, there's been some shakeups. Some people are going yeah. board things. Some people are going holdovers. I think we're sticking strong here. I think we're sticking strong with Offline, I mean, as you'll see from this list, there's been a lot of changes. In general, full festivals have enlightened us about a lot of things in this race. I think they've been very helpful this year. Um, but yeah, I do think Oppenheimer, we would still have fairly strong. I still think it is strong to at least win one acting category. I think it's got a chance to win all three. I don't think it will win all three, but I no. think it will win. And we'll talk about we'll, Emily Blunt. We'll talk about all of those kind of stuff. In yeah, in another video. video. You'll see, I think it's still very strong in director. I think it's almost unshakable in director. I just don't see why Nolan wouldn't win. And we also spot exactly. this in another video you can check out. And um, the channel is all just plugs. It's all just plugs. I know. Yeah, yeah, just, don't <laughs> yes. even watch this video. Just watch all the other yeah, ones. Just, yeah. Um, but yeah, like it was all, obviously, tech nominations are going to be there for it. It makes sense to the winner. It's got an important message. Uh, yeah. It's universally acclaimed. It received a bunch of money. It just, all of these boxes are ticked and ticked and ticked. It's also got black and white cinematography as well. Like it's a black yep. and white film. So there's, there's that to it. Um, so it is sort of an old school Oscar winner in many regards. It's not doing, it's not going to be sort of, you know, everyone's favorite film of the year, I don't think. But I could see this being like number two or number three for a lot of things. Yeah. It will have that passion. Yeah. I just think there are so many makes, reasons. It, it just makes too much sense, which is scary at this point for something that makes too much sense. But equally, it just makes so much sense. Like it doesn't have the detractions that things like Power of the Dog or Roma had. Could it still ha fall into the same traps and be susceptible to the same type of pushback that, as those films? It's like, oh, it's too cold. Let's go for something that makes us feel better. Sure. This film doesn't make you feel good. Yeah. But it just it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think it's also more likely than things like Poor Things and Holdovers to win PGA, which isn't always the most yep. um, important precursor but it is a important precursor the guilds are kind of the most important ones i think pga dj yeah. like and i think if you compare a pga win with a potential bafta win which i think it is again more likely to win yeah. the bafta than poor things or holdovers i think that could just be enough to seal the deal so i don't therefore think it will be this early front runner that sort of tapers off that maybe wins a globe maybe wins a right. choice and then tapers off because i do think it, it's almost its strongest ceremonies are the ones that come later on and the more important supposedly ones. right so, like was was power of the dog ever like oh yeah that makes so much sense as a pga winner no no really. like no uh, roma was that ever like yep pga for sure for sure like i like these things aren't though yeah i don't know i i agree i think that oppenheimer it feels very invulnerable which again is a problem because it's october and a lot can happen but equally it feels really really strong so speaking of pga speaking of sex speaking of wga barbie i think is really strong and yeah yeah like I mean, if, if if we just look at what it can win and i've said this so many times if anything is going to be like the thing and it's so annoying to say like oh the best picture race is barbie and oppenheimer because we're all so tired of barbenheimer i it was yeah. I, I get yeah. and that's really annoying to say that that's the thing but why barbenheimer worked is because it was really good counter programming and you know what the oscars really like as far as like it being the the two things that are competing they like counter programming and they, they like films that offset each other and barbie it's it's was massive like it's the highest grossing film of the year it's really widely liked by critics and audiences it's potentially going to win screenplay it you know going to win two maybe three techs it has a shot to win a supporting acting category with ryan gosling uh, it it makes a lot of sense and the the most important things are that probably the front runner for sag ensemble and probably can win wga and that is such a consistent combo to win sag wga to then go on for best picture and i really don't think it's impossible to say that barbie can win pga yep and i mean the move to original screenplay i think makes it easier to see a world in which you win screenplay um yeah. and also i think the idea of maybe we end up with a barbenheimer narrative because it is a very easy narrative to spin for campaigners and for it's a narrative it's a very easy yeah. narrative to adopt uh, i think that does benefit oppenheimer because i could see Things like poor things hold over start to be shut out. And I really right. don't see a world in which Barbie can actually beat up and over. I just don't think, even if there is a narrative there, is, oh, it's the super yeah. yeah. in, in no world does Barbie actually. Because, end because up here's the thing on a preferential ballot, so, more people are going to put Barbie at the bottom than are going to put Oppenheimer at the bottom. Exactly. So if that narrative does start, you can. Oppenheimer can, you know, say it's acceptance speech already because it would definitely yes. take home. Yeah, but yeah, I do cool. think that Barbie on paper has a better path i want to say like it, it, it it's strong Maybe. and people being like yeah it's 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 not a top contender it's probably in like the nine to ten range like i get 
it's it's so in there and i think it's like easily a top four contender it's but... so in there i just again i mean this has just been the problem with the entirety of barbie's uh it's barbie here. it's barbie no one is got not enough people are going to be taking this seriously as a best picture winner best picture contender sure best picture winner i just don't see it at all so i just yeah, i think it's i, I think hesitate it's to call it a top top contender I really think we've got the race down to now probably three films at this point, and I think Barbie's like the number four. So. I think it's in there. I know. I think Barbie's in there. I don't. So, I will. I wouldn't call it a best picture win contender. So. I I I think it's four films, and I think it's Oppenheimer, Barbie, Poor Things, Holdovers. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I agree about. Yeah, I think it is Holdovers and Poor Things, and the other two. I just don't know if Barbie will have. I just don't think it can but get like, around. But like, what other film's going to win SAG and WGA and be a PGA threat? Well, I don't think that could. I don't think that would make it a best picture. Contender. Okay, but what do you do when it wins SAG and WGA? Like, I'm just saying. Like, you I'm just. I'm posing questions. Picture. Yeah, I guess it's it's fair enough to pose questions at this point. Like, it's really it's October. Well it is October, yeah. and these like was saying in a vacuum that Barbie's going to win SAG and WGA and potentially be top two for BGA. Saying those things in a vacuum isn't insane to say. And just look at the data. Like, because uh, yeah. I, I know, I, I think so much predicting right now, we're just looking at like, you know, what we think will, what we think is going to happen. But like, when we actually get into it, like at the end of the year, we're looking at precursors. So if we're thinking about what's going to win the precursors. Yeah. <sighs> but equally, I think Oppenheimer has other precursors there, which is why I'm saying like, sure. I think Oppenheimer can win easy PGA. Because it's, PGA, made, BAFTA, like, it's, not, it's exactly. Choice. I think PGA BAFTA is a better combo than SAG WGA, like yeah. easy, just on paper, fairly easily. Probably. But yeah. I just, as I say, I think it's hard to take it out of a vacuum and it's hard to say Barbie, in my mind, will ever be. A I have it number two. I have Barbie number two. Yeah, you've yeah, got like, Barbie number two. You yeah, think, yeah. Really? A picture. Okay. I, I strongly disagree. I strongly disagree. I'll say that. I, but, I, I think that's entirely fair. Um, I think uh, it's hard to shut out poor things as a major contender for that experience. I, like, I, yes, I can I, yeah. I can see an argument potentially if you're not going for the holdovers uh, narrative, but to say it's stronger than poor things, I think is questionable. It's all there. It's it's all in there. It's all there. Um okay, so the other the other two things other than Barbie and Oppenheimer that I think are very strongly in the race. You have poor things and you have the holdovers. And uh, like poor things just got great reactions out of if building on you know all the things from before that we've heard like it's just it's gonna be great i i'm not convinced it's like winning actress for emma stone um no no neither and i'm not i'm not convinced like both actors supporting actors need to happen i'm not even convinced one of them needs to happen i mean i think it will but i don't think it's like solidly in there necessarily especially with supporting act. like the two categories that it is contending in same with past lives unfortunately are the two categories that in my mind are the most stacked in terms of acting you've got actress yeah, and actor supporting supporting actor. Yeah. and so if these are the categories you're trying to contend in it's very easy to picture that like you know potentially like emma's gonna get in, in. Like, emma's emma gonna... will get in but like Ruffalo and Defoe don't have to if they don't go for it majorly. In the I think Ruffalo so. probably. I don't see Defoe. Probably, probably. Do you think he's win competitive? Though? I don't. I don't think so. No, I don't think he's win competitive. No, no. Which places him automatically in the sort of four or five range. I think. Right. Sure. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. And like, I just, I'm also not convinced that poor things as like winning below the line stuff like production and costume design. Like para, like it's it's gonna be there it's obviously gonna be nominated and be a top contender and like it's probably gonna get a score nomination and cinematography and editing and like visual effects and makeup yeah. it'll probably get nominations but do i think it's winning anything like production and costume design is the obvious one but i still think barbie's winning there probably like most likely most likely so, as you say we don't think in director we don't really think it well i guess screenplay i think screenplay will screenplays it's one it chance takes home. i think screenplays is one chance to win but can it win off the back of just screenplay when often has got director and the text hey, right he's got supporting act potentially plus screenplay plus the text like poor things like, is gonna need to take some text or overcome nolan's narrative or like get emma stone like it needs something else for me to think of it as like yeah. a winner yeah i need to see as you say something happen to the narrative of poor things because equally the narrative as well isn't the strongest like love was isn't no. that overdue like yes the issues are important but they're not necessarily like and they're also being touched on as an in and they're also and being they're touched also on in Barbie, films. which yeah. is 
way more white like sure it's going to probably be critically less well received but it's not like barbie was poorly received critically and barbie's going to have way higher box office and like just general public and general like buzz and everything like that yeah so, like so this being a problem equally having said all this there is definitely a world in which it does win these tags emma stone does win yeah screen does win again it's really october in which those things do happen yeah. for it therefore it has to be considered yeah especially again. with searchlight as well they know how to again. run the best picture campaign yeah yeah and again it's october a lot can change this they're just like they're kind of in groups and this is just the group of potential winners and now holdovers like it's there original screenplay supporting actress for divine joy randolph that category is pretty open now yeah Uh oh yeah look what we have i mean yeah exactly i don't think jimati is impossible i don't know if i'm thinking it's likely but i'm not gonna yeah. say it's impossible screenplay is there's also a world possible. where jimati snubbed like if i'm being honest there is there is a weird world like, in which that happens uh but there is definitely one of which screenplay wins i mean they've gone they, yeah. they like alexander Payne and the writer clearly uh Mind barbie it is foreseeable sense. that barbie doesn't necessarily get in and past lives as well it yep. is foreseeable that we do get something a bit more traditional, a bit more typical, but it's just sort of this crowd pleasing thing, which we thought like two years ago with Belfast and Coda doubled up like wins. Like, yes, it is very understandable that they could go for something like holders. So, plus it's in director, plus so you can see text like editing happen for it. It just feels like a very cozy best picture nominee contender. Therefore, it's not too hard to take it as a step further and think, well, what if it does win screenplay? What if it does win Divine Joy Randolph? How much yep. pushes it into being a proper best pitch contender? I think not very much. You like, don't have to WGA? What if it, like, I mean, it's probably going to get nominated PGA, DGA. Like, I mean, SAG, you imagine Divine Joy Randolph, like, could win that. I mean, it could also be Emily Blunt. It could also be Dana Brooks. It could be all these things. We'll see if it gets SAG Ensemble, depending on how big the cast is. But, like, I, I don't know. Like, there's there's definitely a path for this film. Yeah. Um, and it's just it's just kind of sitting there lurking and I'm just waiting for it to like yeah because i say like it may be on paper isn't the most obvious contender but there's not too many leaps in logic and suddenly oh it does it does become a contender so yeah and, and again i think that we have to look at like precursors like what do we do thomas mm -hmm. what do we do if this like beats barbie and poor things for the globe and then all of a sudden it has a bunch of momentum for comedy. Like, will that happen? Probably not. See, but yeah, if there's does definitely happen. a world where the Globes, like, go for that. And then, now, did the Globes mean that much? Like, pro like, no. But it is a televised ceremony that's going to get, like, eyes on films and let people make speeches. Like, and if Divine Joy Randolph can get the ball rolling, if that can, like, you know, start getting going in screenplay, like... yeah. I mean, if Dominic Sessa starts coming on with it, that's free. Then yep. acting nominations. I do think the thing that hurts Holdovers is the fact that I think Holdovers and Barbie, out of the Oscar contenders, will perform not very well at BAFTAs. I think poor things yep. are kind of their fine at BAFTAs. And BAFTAs are not like obviously like live or die in terms of film yeah. contention, but equally they are quite important. They're the ceremony that happens right before they are. Well, they not this year. This year it's well. SAG. This year it is this SAG. Year it's SAG. But still, I think BAFTA do have. A certain amount of sway over the Oscars in the same way or to a greater extent than a lot of other of these precursors do so I do think that could be a problem for the whole of us and again it's just about seeing where are the winds where are the winds coming from so like like right. even if it does get to bind Joe Randolph and screenplay that doesn't strike me as enough to be Oppenheimer's package so even if it does win everything even if it does have its best day at the Oscars doesn't necessarily mean the best picture for it so yeah. right yeah no i agree i agree i mean and again if you're making those comparisons with power of the dog aroma like those were doing well but like power of the dog in the end only one director yeah like uh roma roma wasn't sweeping like you know potentially like seven or eight wins like <laughs> yeah that just... yeah i think the reason we are potentially looking at a holdover is winning certain categories is because the categories we're looking at them winning in are very open categories like original exactly. screenplay and sporting actors they're two of the most potential like yeah. open categories that we've got yeah. so yeah just as it is feasible to predict that they would win it is also just as feasible to predict that they wouldn't so yep it's a questionable situation Absolutely. it's a sticky one with holders but i definitely think it needs to be considered as a strong best pitch contender yeah yeah again i think that it's these top four are like i could i could foresee them winning and i, I know you weren't as strong on barbie but i just I can't like, foresee barbie winning I but like you would still have barbie top four like, uh, yes, I, I still think it's easy number four. four. Yes, I think it is, yeah, so solidly in. 
I just can't yeah. just see it winning. So. Which, is, which is fair. Which is um, Killers of the Flower Moon. It's there. I don't think it's necessarily like I just. This is one where it's like obviously it's probably gonna get like ten plus nominations. Like I think Poor Things, Oppenheimer, Barbie, and Killers are all going to get ten plus nominations, and it's gonna be like twenty nineteen where we have four films do that. I, I don't really think it's going to win any of them. And you know before before we were saying like oh well it, you know Lily Gladstone Lily Gladstone's still gonna win. Well guess what happened. It's probably going to be that 10 plus nomination film that doesn't win anything. Most likely. Most likely. That's what I'd be predicting for it. Um, and also this narrative that, like, yes, there is something there to say about the Native American stuff and that sort of representation. It's hard to call this sort of the most important film when you've got films like Oppenheimer that exist out there for this year. So that narrative probably won't track in my mind, even yeah. if people are trying to implant on there that, yes, this is a film of today. This is a film of now. I don't think that narrative will stick. And where is it getting wins? Where is yeah. it getting wins? Like, exactly. Like, why are people going to be going for this film to win things? I just don't, right. I just don't know. I like, just like Tex, it. it's going to lose everything to Oppenheimer, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. screenplay, it's probably behind both Oppenheimer and Poor Things and Adapted. Yeah. If you look at, like, acting categories, is Robert De Niro really going to win? Probably not. Is DiCaprio really going to win? Like, uh, no, why, why are we voting for DiCaprio? It, it, Lily Gladstone, probably still the best chance for this film. But yeah. she's now in a way more competitive category in comparison yeah. to Super Nectar. Scorsese is just not like, why is he going to win director? Like, why? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, just, that, I mean, that's a good question you bring up, this sort of why aspect. And I think the only one that has an answer is sort of Lily Gazzo. Like, that is the only one that right. sort of makes sense why. why you'd vote for it. And I even think all of the narrative stuff in terms of Native American, that can also just be just attached onto to Lily Gazzo. Exactly. I think all of this film, if you're an awards campaigner, I think direct all your attention towards Lily Gladstone because I think that is yeah. the best chance you've got. And that could genuinely still happen. I think Lily Gladstone could genuinely still And happen. I really want it to. Like, I am a massive fan of Lily Gladstone. I, like, I've followed her on, like, the indie scene. Like, I love her and Kelly Reichardt stuff, of course. You know, yeah. if you know anything about me, obsessed with Kelly Reichardt. And, like, I mean, she's just a fantastic actress, like, in this year alone. Like, uh, like Fancy Dance, The Unknown Country. Like, phenomenal performer. And I absolutely love that she's getting all this attention right now. And, you know, like, if she wins an Oscar, I would be so happy. Um, but it just, I, I really like, and I agree. I, I think that all of the attention really should be funneled around her because I don't see a path for the film otherwise. No, no. Um, l looking at some other things that are like there, I think we can agree are probably gonna get nominated, but we don't necessarily see them as, as you know, contenders or threats to win in any way. Maestro, I think it's pretty much asserted itself as like Netflix's thing. And like everybody really liked it at NIF. Like, uh, I mean, I like I don't think that Bradley Cooper is going to be winning in either actor or director. Like, he could win an actor. I don't think he's getting nominated for a director. I know there are people who think that now. Um, but like, uh, like you know, Mulligan, I think is you know going to be a very strong contender to win an actress. The film's probably going to be winning makeup. Probably going to get cinematography. Like it has enough. Yes, exactly. Especially if it's Netflix's top priority, which it seems to be. Right. Like honestly, anything Netflix chooses to put their eggs behind, if it is their top contender, just put it in Best Picture. And I feel like this is just the case of this one. Fundamentally, it's a right film with the right time for Netflix. Therefore, they can just shepherd it to a very easy Best Picture. As you say, it's got the acting behind it. Potentially, even screenplay could come along with it, which, which we yeah. weren't expecting at all a couple of months ago. But now, original, there is space in there. There is foreseeable yep. space in there for it. So if it gets that, that's just a nice little cherry on top. A nice little extra nomination that further cements. It is a best picture, like sort of in best picture. Yeah, I really don't. I'm not worried about this at all. But as you say, there's just not much. I just don't see it winning at all. Like it, No, this film's not good. Like we're into the territory where we're, we, yeah. we're not going to talk about any of these films as no. far as wins. Like no. um, past lives. It's in, right? Like it's just. Hopefully it's still in. It feels like it should have enough passion by the end of the year. I mean, it's A24's top priority, you'd presume. I so, don't see where else yeah. to go. Like, yeah. acting could be a problem for it. I could see both Greta Lee and John Magari not happening. Uh, in yeah. fact, I don't even know if I would be predicting Greta Lee. I'd have to look at sort of... They're close. The field. They're close. Exactly. But they're close enough in there, whereas the conversation around them will still help past lives in terms of momentum and, like, building. And, Celine Song is right there. I don't, again, right there. we'll have to, I don't know if I have her in at this point, yeah. but like, she's there. She's yeah. there. And like, it's, I, yeah. yeah. It's on the edge of a lot of stuff, except screenplay, which it could win. I think that is like 
fairly understandable if it does win screenplay. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think it could get in off just though. screenplay, to be honest. Off right, and that's, the, and that's the thing. I, I think that this can just get screenplay and still get in the picture. I don't know if it needs everything else. Like I think that significantly weakens it as far as it strengthened the category. But it isn't to the point of like, I don't know, I don't consider it in like that, that bubble of like, oh, is it going to get in? Will it? Won't it? Like, I feel pretty comfortable having it in my best picture prediction still. Yeah. And even though weirdly you see things like Zone of Interest and All of Us Strangers potentially have higher Metacritic scores and higher critical claim. Yeah. I think this is more likely to be a sort of critics group thing. This is going to be, in my mind, the thing that yeah. wins of Indie Spirit, the thing that goes on to win these critical awards, which is very helpful so absolutely yeah. absolutely absolutely and i i think kind of like teetering that line between the, the you know will it won't it and being in i think is anatomy of a fall so since we last recorded it, it got it france didn't pick it for international feature but i think this is fine because i think you just even just have to look at last year with triangle of sadness and that that wasn't like snubbed for a pick it just you know wasn't eligible for international feature uh it wasn't an international film but like that was a palm door winner that you know had quite a bit of english in it like anatomy falls quite a bit of english in it this has i mean a performance that's probably gonna be nominated for best actress it's in screenplay neon like they can just campaign these things like i think he'll be fine yeah i mean i don't see like we saw triangle of sadness i think this is just another case of that where at the end yeah. of the year i think it could probably be like the nine or ten in best picture if you see things like color purple especially when that comes out yeah. if it comes out to good reviews and just it asserts itself in it yes an afternoon right. could be one that we're looking at potentially by the end of the year is not um sort of as, as right there at the bottom but equally i think it will still stay there right there at the bottom therefore like as you say i'm confident sandra Hunter gets in i'm confident screenplay gets in and i'm confident the film is critically acclaimed enough to warrant its place so not too worried not too worried but as you say there are things that could potentially go a bit wrong for this if things like all of us strangers and the color purple and american fiction if all of them start to develop a narrative zone of interest even right. if that still comes up because especially with that now being eligible for international feature you can build mental yeah. that which we'll talk about all of these films but if all of these things start to happen i could see it getting pushed down a little bit but as of right now, I don't think all of these things will take off. So yeah. yeah, again, I just I still think it's fine. I don't think that there's any reason to to panic about it yet. Like both this and past lives, like I don't think that there's reason to panic yet. Maybe you know two three months from now we're having a different conversation and we are panicking. But I think it's fine for now. I don't know. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Um, you brought up the color purple. That's again like we got it in. I I see no reason to necessarily have it out of our ten right now. Um, but it's just kind of a, a waiting game with this because like it's gonna be coming out at the end of the year we don't know what the reviews are going to be like they could be i, I mean really anything like I, I really can't get a read on this film i don't know what its box office is going to be like i mean it could have some screener issues with globes and the guilds so that could hurt it as far as precursors like we talked about this could potentially just be west side story like is fantasia brino going to come along or is she just rachel zegler like yeah, I mean, if this is just West Side Story, but it's not directed by Spielberg, then it's like its package isn't great because probably isn't going to get director. Like, so there's definitely things to consider, but I don't want to make too bold of claims about this film because, like, we haven't, like, nobody's really seen it yet, and on paper it looks fine. Yeah, no, I, I mean, you say it could receive sort of any reviews. I don't really see it being received like negatively, like flat out sure. negatively. I think at worst it's sort of this mediocre thing, but in which case I could see it just being an acting thing. It gets a couple of texts. Like I could definitely see it getting all the nominations we're predicting for it to get with a Best Picture nomination without the Best Picture nomination, which is yeah. potentially worrying because that could suggest that maybe to many this is not something that you need to go for in picture and open up space for some of the other smaller things potentially there. They come out um i think there could be a sort of sense that this is not yeah. an urgent requirement you don't need to vote for color purple which i do think would be a problem for it but equally i think there'll be enough of a contingency and i think as, a, as i said before any if this wasn't a year of 10 i don't think we would have 10 and i don't think color purple would be getting in yeah but since it is a year of 10 i think there is just enough space for it to sort of slip in as this thing that maybe people aren't the most passionate about but it's talked about enough it's got other nominations. It's impressive enough. Whatever, whatever. Tick. Yeah, cool. It's managed to get a best picture. Nominee. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. And again, I just, like I said, I don't think that we can make too strong of, like, a, a no. sort of claims, I guess, about it. 
um, until it comes out or until we at least start to get reviews coming out for the film, which will probably happen in like probably beginning of December, I'd imagine, is when critics will start seeing it. You'd hope, yeah. We'd get some reaction by that point, hopefully before Globe nominations. But yeah, you know. No, it's not entirely guaranteed that we'll get that. Yeah, I'd imagine. Well, people would have to see it before the Globes, like at least like. Well, yeah, yeah. But you know, to get to general consensus, you know, right. early reviews, you can't really ever trust. You need a, you need a consensus. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, number 10, we were going for American fiction, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think so. It makes sense like, that I, I just don't want to bet against Tiff People's Choice. And yes, this is just sort of a trend, not a stat. Right. But equally to win over that number of people in a in a festival like that where a lot of the taste clearly in the past has reflected academy writers taste to win over that sort of audience I think yeah and just said. and just on paper like if mgm campaigns this right like it makes sense to slip into a screenplay nomination yeah and it doesn't feel right to have a best picture lineup without jeffrey wright at this point yeah. at least to me like it, it feels like he's gonna get in and weirdly i don't know if i have him in my five right now because it's just a matter of who's who's going to fall. Because yeah. I feel like he gets it. Like, he's just going to, like, he's going to be top two for Globe alongside Paul Giamatti. He, Critics' Choice are going to do six. So it's just going to be our top five, which, if you don't know, it's Killian Murphy, Bradley Cooper, uh, Coleman Domingo, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Paul Giamatti. And then Jeffrey Wright is the six. And that's really all that we have. So Critics' Choice is just going to do those six. And then... Like the, I think SAG is going to be really telling because BAFTA are hard to trust because of racism yeah. and also, sorry, I, I misspoke. Their 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 voting system, their their weird jury yeah. system. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I think SAG is going to be really telling because those are going to be five and those are you know voted on by actors and I think that that's what we're really going to look towards to see if Jeffrey Wright gets in there and who misses out. Well, I mean, you said I don't know if Jeffrey Wright will get in SAG. I think that it could be a problem yeah. for him. I think I'm in a situation where I was sort of with a uh, director in, in 2021 where I felt very strongly that Hamaguchi was happening. I just had no yeah. idea which one was going to drop. So I thought, well, there's not going to yeah. predict it. And I think this is the same here. I don't want to predict Jeffrey Wright just because I don't know who's going to drop. I could see literally right. any one of them bar Killian Murphy. Yeah. Dropping like, Bradley Cooper could make sense to drop, especially if he does put all of eggs behind the directing. Yeah. Common Domingo could easily drop, um, especially for Jeffrey Wright. Like, they could just be a uh, director. And it, it's really bad to say, but this is sometimes yeah. how Oscar voters think, which is very bad, yeah. obviously, but equally, it is how the system works. And then, like, Leonardo DiCaprio, do you have to do him again? Paul Giamatti, do they have to come along with the holders? Not necessarily. So, yeah. You know. So, and again, it's a weird case, but like, I do feel kind of strongly that it's Jeffrey Wright's going to get in. Good that he can get in, and- yeah. If you have this type of like crowd pleasing fun film that people are getting behind in MGM again, if they can paint it correctly and it's able to get screenplay actor, like I, I don't know, I don't know. I, I think it kind of makes sense, especially when looking at the other options. Um, I just yeah. I like American fiction in the slot right now, but because I mean I, the other thing is that it can just get an offline screenplay. Like we've talked about Jeffrey Wright, but. Okay, but are we going to say both Past Lives and America? Are we going to say two films get in on loan screenplay? Well, I don't know, because what else would we be looking at? I mean, things like All of Us Strangers yeah. would presumably be getting in off just loan screenplay. Oh, loan screenplay. I mean, yeah. you could argue Paul Mescal, but equally we've talked about Sporting Actor before. That feels like a catchy. Fact. Could just be too stacked for him. Yeah, at best, probably. And like, and this is the interesting thing, because we talked about we think four films are going to get 10 plus nominations, and a lot of them are kind of focused above the line. Like, you have mm. those four films. I mean, Barbie, Killers, Oppenheimer and poor things that are taking up spots uh in some cases multiple spots in all of these acting categories and yeah. like it's it's making the packages really really weird so maybe we do see some some like lower nomination count films uh end up actually sliding in or film yeah. off just text or something like yeah because i trust something to get sort of just one above the line thing that i do to get sort of maybe free tech noms which we could see some films getting yeah. here like i trust the above your line nomination more so. yeah yeah no for sure for sure so it's it's interesting it's interesting do you do you have any any strong opinions about number 11 number 11 um i'd put all of us strangers uh right there I mean, just I'm in case that as well. because yeah. this is another thing that it's so sure it's come out to festival people but we don't know what it's going to be like in terms of general public if the general public are also going for it and also loving it then maybe it could just become a thing like i could yeah. just see paul mescal becoming a thing i could just see uh screenplay becoming a thing and that could be enough for it to just slide in so yeah i yeah. think in terms and in terms of a sort of direct comparison i think all of us strange in american fiction are like these sort of 
weird and potentially slightly less mainstream things that get screenplay nominations. So I do think they're quite comparable and it could just be a case of one over the other. We just don't know which one it will be at the stage. Yeah, no, I'd agree. I think that you can also kind of throw May December into that category as like Yeah, uh, actually maybe, maybe that, something lesser extent. That, yeah. That, because that also has a lot more acting potential though. Um because I mean I mean Natalie Portman, Julian Moore, Charles Milton. I don't know if I have any of them in. Maybe maybe Julian Moore, but like they're they're all there. And like if May December slides into screenplay, again, there's there's definitely a world where yeah. that can I just find it hard to believe for a film that has been so highlighted for the excellent performances that it, they would go for in Best Picture without doing the other things. So Right. I mean there's also a world where what if it's just being the Ricardos and the performances get in and it isn't picture? Could like, be. Could be. Yeah, that, that's that's also a very distinct possibility. Um, the zone of interest. I, I mean, like, there's a world where this gets picture director and international feature and wins international feature. There's also a world where it gets the decision to leave and doesn't get a single nomination, not even international feature. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I think you're banging money there with that one. Like, I don't know. I want to see how it appeals to wider audiences. I think we've seen I, which, crowd, and sure. I don't think it's going to appeal very well. Like, exactly. That's like, crowd, know. sure. That is exactly who who these films who this film is aimed at. So yes, of course it worked for you. Like I worked for general really public. hyped about it, but like Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And I think a poor general reception will severely hurt a film like this, since it is looking yeah. for momentum. It is looking for, you know. People and, and like it. the other problem is that when this came out, it was ninety eight. Artist argument was like, oh well, this is just gonna be the critics thing. It doesn't matter what the general public thinks because like this is just going to be the critics thing. No other film is gonna get this. Well, guess what? We've had like five films get a ninety five plus of Metacritic. Like everything is apparently just incredible this year, which is amazing for cinema. It, yeah. I, I love that everything is apparently good, but it means that we can't have something like this that's maybe a bit weirder be in as the critics thing when, like that like that attention is going to be divided we don't just have a clear like oh well obviously it's this like yeah yeah and i also think it's in a weird position in international which as you say it could very easily get snubbed it could very easily be the winner i think it is weirdly either win or get snubbed i think those are two options for it um at this stage and vfx yeah no for sure for sure but yeah like i since it's not solidly in that category i find it hard to believe it will be indirect i find it hard to believe it can get a picture nomination having said that it is still on the edge because they have gone for the international winners in fairly recent years so yeah they could just sort of go for it there and jonathan glazer is potentially overdue an oscar nomination so sure sure um spider-verse i think we still got to bring it up i just like i i think it is a bit harder to to kind of make an argument for it. again as more things are just coming out and being really really good it's just kind of getting pushed out um i still think it's in and around the conversation because i think i like it can still slide into a screenplay nomination i think and as long as an animated film can still do that like it you know it's, it has to at least be considered i think yeah i mean unfortunately i think we're at a case where we're going to get one of the best animated feature winners of a decade of all time potentially yeah but it's going to be an, an animated feature and it right might and it's just be because like it's like because it's just like again this year is just really good yeah because like, especially since i find it hard to believe things like like the baptist won't go for it the clothes won't no. go for it like pga won't go for, well pga could pga might pga yeah, actually probably choice good. Right. like critics choice like uh, and that's what i'm saying like the, it, it yeah. has a couple of things yeah but i just don't know if it, the academy i think would be more aligned with the baftas and the globes in this regard so yeah yeah sure. it's a shame i would like to see it in i think it's one of the best films yeah. of the year i think it'll probably will stay that way towards the end of the yeah. year but yeah i think all of the narrative behind it would just be fun of it absolutely absolutely is there anything else i mean there's salt burn would love for this to happen it, it looks great. Very excited to see it. Ah. I mean, Air, I think, needs to be mentioned. Oh, my God. I do think Air I don't, needs I to be mentioned. It's not going to happen. I just... I, I know. So but supporting the actress yeah. now, Viola Davis, screenplay is not too crazy, I thought. That could just, be enough. Like, I, I don't know. Enough. Viola Davis... Okay, Viola Davis is giving Eddie Redmayne in The Good Nurse. Viola Davis is giving Jared Leto in The Little Things. Uh, like, sure. uh, Bill Murray in sure. On The Rocks. Ben Affleck in The Tender Bar. But, like, that's but, what it feels like to me. This is what it feels like. People like Air. Why do audiences like Air and have seen Air and apparently continuing to watch I Air? I feel like its reception was similar to The Good Nurse. The Good Nurse just came out at a more crowded time. I don't know. I didn't hear much 
negative things from air from the people who were wanting who were always gonna like air i don't know air worked for the people it was meant to work for and i think it's hard to argue that a large contingency of the academy are the people that would like air sure. i yeah so i, do. I don't know because i also think i think there are other stuff there for them this year i think they've got things like the holdovers like yeah so i don't know if there is enough space for air really i think we've got the expanded sort of voting body allows for things like American fiction to happen rather than air, which is maybe like seven on a lot of people's ballots by the end of the year. Like it's their seventh yeah. favourite film of the year. Like they like air, but it's not their favourite. Right. I and think that like, is going to mean it gets pushed out. But. Like, and, and like Viola could happen, but like, I just, I think that there's a very real possibility where she starts happening for precursors and then we all think she's going to happen and then yeah. she gets snubbed. Or maybe she just happens by herself and she feels in that kind of trend where it's like, oh, it's just a lone supporting nomination for a film that, you know, doesn't get nominations anywhere else, i.e. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry uh, last year, right? For Causeway. Like, I just, there's so many things that, like, I just, I don't see this amounting to Best Picture. I don't know who's voting for, like, who, I don't, I just, I don't see it. Air as yeah. a nominee just doesn't make sense to me. No, and it doesn't really either for me. I think it will just lack the passion. It will be pushed out by the end of the year. Like, we were already talking about, surely we can't, we can't have two. Also, films sorry, films sorry. Films. Also, Air is not, Air, so Amazon and MGM are combining as like a, as, or they're campaigning as a collective, at least their FYC page is a collective. Before, it was two separate things there's mgm fic and then there's amazon all right this year at least so far it looks like they're doing it as the same thing they got american fiction i think they're gonna put more yeah. behind american fiction than air i just i mean oh. hopefully you would have thought i guess the thing is there is a very easy campaign you can launch behind air you can get I michael know. jordan involved i know you can like there's a lot of things you can do with this film and there is a very real possibility that amazon and mgm think I mean, it's just a bit easier to campaign air. Sure, American Vision might be the better film, might be the more critically game film, but it's just a bit easier to go for air. And I do think it is a bit easier to go for air. However, as I said, like, I think we were already talking about, oh, we can't have too many films before festivals. And yeah, I, I agree. I, I actually agree with that statement that, you know, sure, yeah. they're not all going to come out then. And I think air will be one of those ones that comes out, gets forgotten about, maybe picks up precursors. But the Academy, will the Academy go for it? Story. I just don't think so. I, I'm sorry. No. I just, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, other random thing, like Priscilla, probably not, like, unless that becomes A24's top for some reason, but like, I don't think that's... Really I don't crazy. think there's a world in which Priscilla... And then there's has. also the, there's also the Rustin thing where, okay, what if Domingo, and then what if it gets screenplay as well, and then what if it gets song, but I just, I really, yeah. as things have filled out more, I just don't really think Yeah, that. I mean, there is a sort of chain reaction you can pin towards Rustin, and Rustin could yeah. potentially become Netflix's number two. Netflix has got to him plenty of times before. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. I just, as a, like, even talking about it, I'm not very passionate to talk about it. Therefore, right, will people be passionate to vote for it? I don't know. I don't see it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Is there anything else that we're missing, or is that kind of everything? I think that's basically everything. I think we've now shrunk in the competition to about 15. I don't know exactly yeah. how many, but it's about 15 that we're looking at. Really. Yeah. yeah, like I, I don't, I don't think anything. <laughs> like I don't think there's going to be a film that we neglected to mention that is going to come out and get a nomination at this point. And no. like, you know, maybe that will happen. You can play this clip, you know, four months in it, you know, and we can laugh at it. But like, I just, I, I don't know. I, as you say, I feel like we've, we've shrunken the competition sufficiently enough. Um, uh, yeah, it's definitely narrowed a bit, which is what festivals are for. They can, they can yeah. help with that. But I think that's everything. Uh, this was our uh, our post festival best picture conversation. We're I mean we're getting kind of close. It's only like four or five <laughs> months until Oscar nominations. Like it's yeah, we're we're yeah. getting there. Precursors are great. Like Golden Globe nominations are in like two months. Like yeah, it's getting close. It, we're getting very very close. So lots of fun stuff. Uh, we'll be having videos for acting and directing and writing and text and all of those fun things coming over the next uh, couple of days. Um, and also Tom is going to London Film Festival. I'm going to Chicago International Film Festival. Lots of fun things and lots of fun coverage coming from those. So make sure that you stick around for that to hear our thoughts on a bunch of uh, what we hope will be really, really great films. Hopefully. But until then, you can support The Strikes through the link in the description and also follow us on social media if that is something you are interested in. And until next time, thank you everybody for watching. Stay safe. And goodbye.